This is the International Academy for Clinical Hematology broadcasting live from Paris. It is uh, one minute past the hour, and it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome you all to this uh, special webinar entitled Social Media in Medicine, a few tips on how to manage your virtual reputation. I'm Mohamed Mouti from the Sorbonne University and St. Antoine Hospital uh, in Paris, in France. And I would like to warmly thank all of you for joining today's webinar on a topic that is becoming increasingly important in the medical field. Because navigating social media and protecting your professional reputation are becoming uh, a matter of concern, uh, I would say. Of course, social media is a powerful uh, tool for healthcare professionals in general, offering unique opportunities to share knowledge, uh, to stay informed, uh, to connect both with colleagues, but also with the uh, general public. However, we should not forget that it also presents some specific challenges and risk, especially when it comes to maintaining professional boundaries and protecting your reputation in this cloud or in the digital world. So this webinar is part of a, a large series of webinars that we have already launched within the ICH dedicated to uh, the broader topic of uh, communication uh, in uh, medicine in our field. Uh, today, specifically, uh, I will uh, discuss some practical strategies based on my personal experience for engaging responsibly on social platforms, avoiding the uh, common uh, pitfalls, and managing your online presence with integrity and professionalism. So whether you are an active user or just uh, uh, starting to uh, explore the potential of uh, social media in your practice, uh, our objective today is to provide you uh, with some valuable insights and tools to help you uh, make the most most of uh, these platforms while safeguarding your professional image. So let's dive in. These are my uh, disclosures. So there's always a risk uh, when uh, actually uh, you go uh, into the cloud. And this is about managing your virtual, re virtual reputation. So first of all, first question, why do we as a community or you as a healthcare professional, do you need social media? Well, I don't think I need to spend a lot of time today highlighting that we have witnessed over the last decade a dramatic change in how we communicate. And of course, uh, social media is felt to be increasingly important in patient care, academic projects, interactions, collaborations. Actually, if uh, you ask your children, if we ask our younger children, even like, you know, at age 10 or 12, 11, they can't envision uh, the world without uh, social media. We have to acknowledge, we have queries answered more quickly. Projects and tasks are likely advancing faster. We may wish to discuss this, I'll come back to this. But also it allows for some form of camaraderie and support. You can express your uh, viewpoint. So there is, actually a feeling of being 
less intimidated uh, compared to a face-to-face -face discussion. And I know very well, not all of us are comfortable uh, in a, a large group discussion face-to-face. -face. Some people are shy. Some people have some uh, language barrier. Uh, there are several reasons where being behind a computer uh, can make you feel less intimidated. And it's something positive, uh, actually. And I can give you some examples uh, uh, from the ICH uh, uh, webinars, for instance. Uh, and if you assume a webinar is like a symposium uh, or a lecture uh, uh, in a, an in-person uh, meeting in a Congress, actually in the Congress, you will have two, three, maybe maximum five people uh, jumping to ask questions. When we run an ICH webinar like today, actually it's unbelievable. We have up to 10 times more. And sometimes for a 30 or 40 minutes webinar, we end up having a hundred questions. So you would imagine people feel more comfortable. It's a tool for freedom. Uh, I would call it communication without borders because at the ISCH, uh, we advocate hematology uh, without border. And the idea uh, of this uh, bigger, I would say, social media approach is about bringing all stakeholders from all over the world uh, to share experiences. So it's clear that social media can uh, bring true added value and help in many situations, especially, and uh, uh, again, uh, we will be able to discuss this. And by the way, there will be a, a Q&A uh, session uh, at the end of uh, the webinar. So please stay tuned and you can start posting your questions, your comments, whatever suggestions, maybe sharing your experience with social media. But I think there is a clear, true added value uh, in many situations, education, raising awareness, dissemination of knowledge. Many people attending uh, this webinar are actually uh, were made aware of its existence through social media, and then they clicked and get registered. And of course, because uh, uh, the uh, environment is something uh, which is extremely important uh, to all of us, and it looks like social media is likely environment friendly. So I don't know how familiar uh, you are with social media uh, in uh, uh, general, uh, but there are different platforms, different platforms. Uh, and I have put on this slide and on the next slide, uh, the definition, I would say the official definition of some of the most uh, popular uh, platforms. LinkedIn, this is a purely professional network, which helps to uh, establish uh, actually credentials through a sort of a resume style profile. You can post or share content relevant to your field, and you can connect with other people who work in the same industry field. So it's very uh, highly professional and even uh, people uh, can post that they are open to work. They are looking for this job, this job. So a very professional network. Uh, X, or the former uh, famous uh, Twitter, is a different uh, platform. This is a sounding board where actually you can post in general, unless you have uh, different uh, accounts or registrations or subscriptions. 
140 character thoughts related to your profession, because obviously we are talking here today about the use of social media uh, in our field, in our professional field. You can follow other professionals and be aware of what's ongoing, what's happening, and you can share links to pertinent content. And this is what we do at the ICH. Uh, for instance, we would uh, post the announcement of our webinars on the ICH LinkedIn account, on the ICH X account. And there are a lot of uh, interactions uh, within the community. Facebook. Facebook is more a casual network to connect with peers and leaders on a more personal level and participate in groups uh, focused on specific topics. And I must confess, I don't have uh, personally a Facebook account. I have my LinkedIn, I have uh, my X account. Uh, so because Facebook is more personal, I would say, and I believe what I personally do, but we can uh, discuss your also uh, own experience uh, uh, in this. I would love to hear from you. Uh, Facebook is uh, a more uh, personal platform. YouTube. Well, YouTube is a video sharing site where professional can post the clips of lectures, medical procedures, uh, motivational speeches, uh, movies, songs. Uh, uh, but as far as we are concerned, for instance, we have the ICH YouTube channel and it is unbelievable. Uh, the uh, hundreds of hours of viewing, you can view all the webinars of the ICH on the YouTube channel. And wherever you are, if you have access to YouTube, you just click, uh, you write search ICH and you can view. Thousands of people have uh, managed to easily connect and watch and follow the ICH webinar thanks to YouTube. Instagram, Instagram, I don't have experience. I don't have an Instagram account, it's a photo sharing site where professionals can post images of new products, trade show, convention gathering, inspirational ideas, or more, I guess, I don't know, pathologists, radiologists may wish to have an Instagram account and share uh, CT scans and uh, images, MRI. Uh, there are a few other platforms you can see here, Pinterest, TikTok, Tumblr, uh, blogging platforms to uh, write essays, commentaries, uh, idea sharing site to share images, collections, article, uh, post. Uh, TikTok looks like uh, more for the youngest uh, generation. It's a sort of an outlet to express themselves through singing, dancing, comedy. Uh, my feeling, uh, at least what I personally use, but again, as I mentioned, I'd love to hear from uh, you and your experience. Uh, my feeling is that LinkedIn, uh, X, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube are likely uh, the most uh, adapted or convenient to what we do in our practice. Well, now, this is, I would say, uh, the bright uh, view and the bright side uh, of uh, uh, the coin. And as we say, there's no free lunch. It doesn't exist. So there are inconveniences uh, uh, associated with uh, social media. Well, obviously, it can be viewed as a positive thing to have rapid, quick, instant communication. But it is an inconvenience because instant, rapid communication means you can make mistakes quickly. And remember, once it is in the cloud, there's no step back. So, See, there are always uh, this delicate balance 
between uh, going quickly, but also taking your time to think uh, more deeply about how you would like uh, to formulate things. Well, obviously all of this is about communication. The question is whether social media can allow to improve communication. Well, actually I'm asking this question because all of us, we, we are in our field, we are scientists. Uh, physician scientists, researchers, and we believe in evidence-based. And actually, I couldn't find while preparing uh, this webinar, uh, data, scientific data, telling me that social media is improving the quality of our communication together. I couldn't find data showing that it allows to enhance productivity, efficiency, or collaboration. It may be true, but I don't have the evidence for this. So the evidence-based data about the real impact of social media in the health system is not yet very strong. Although we do have, uh, we can speculate uh, uh, about some positive impact indeed. Uh, otherwise, we would have been uh, been talking about it uh, now. But as you may guess, uh, it's not about like what you usually do. You want to prove uh, a new drug is useful. You run a phase three randomized trial. You compare the new treatment to the old treatment, and then you end up with a very robust conclusion. It's more difficult, actually, uh, to generate uh, evidence-based data when it comes to these social uh, media tools. There are also, in my opinion, and again, uh, uh, my disclaimer uh, for this webinar, is that all of this is about my personal opinion. You may share, uh, agree, or disagree with me, and I'm more than happy uh, to accept all opinions. Uh, this is based on my personal experience with social media and my perception uh, of the advantages and uh, inconvenience. For instance, I view it as a major inconvenience is the decreased spoken and face-to-face -face interactions. And that can uh, harm or erode our relationships. I'm convinced that we need a mix of these virtual digital interactions, but we cannot skip the need to be face to face, to have direct interaction, uh, uh, to listen to each other, uh, to see each other, to sit next to each other, to debate with each other face to face. Also, because of the briefty and the usually quick and short uh, lengths of uh, what you would post on social media, there is a clear risk of misunderstanding. And actually, you never know the what the person behind the screen, how this person is going to interpret whatever you have posted. You may have only a goodwill, only positive thinking, but someone can read your post uh, very differently. Also, we should not forget that social media and the way we handle this can lead to frequent interruptions and multitasking. And that is not a good sign for productivity and efficiency. Uh, and of course, uh, creativity and in science and medicine, we need to be creative. Uh, we need to think deeply. We need sometimes to have periods of intensive focus. If you want to generate new data, if you want to think about uh, 
new treatments, uh, if you want to understand a new set of experiments, actually uh, fragmented and brief uh, statements uh, are not sufficient. And this is what you have with social media, something very brief, fragmented, very quick, and that's not uh, sufficient for the long-term goal of uh, being creative. And I am uh, insisting on uh, the uh, inconvenience. It's not a pure speculation. Uh, it is because based on past experience, things can go wrong. Actually, it's not just a view of my spirit. And uh, I copied and pasted here just a couple of cases uh, from the UK. You can see 2013, so a long time ago. But there are dozens of stories like this. You can see, for instance, this uh, story of nurses being sacked after posting pictures of themselves online wearing incontinence pads and tweet patient personal details. So I don't know the details of the story and the goal today is not uh, to debate this, but clearly it is an example uh, how things can uh, go uh, wrong. Uh, and uh, I don't know whether there was an intention to do any harm, but clearly uh, social things went uh, wrong here. This is another uh, example uh, from 2016, for instance. Uh, accident and emergency doctor who ranted on Twitter about neurotic patient who are crippling the NHS with, well, you could understand, call out can keep his job because some people may agree with him. So you can see it's absolutely crazy. Uh, the number of situations that, again, I'm not commenting specifically, I'm just showing these two examples to show you that it's not pure speculation uh, about things going wrong uh, because of the use of social media. And you need to be extremely uh, careful about it. So having said this, having put the pro and con, what to do? <laughs> because it's like, you know, when you want to use a new drug, you know the efficacy, you know the side effect, and then your brain, your software, your brain is your software as a, a physician, as a nurse, as a healthcare professional, uh, is going to assess, to fine tune this permanent dilemma of calculating uh, the ratio between benefit and risk of a given drug for a given patient. And this is about your clinical judgment where you would use your knowledge, your experience, evidence-based data, uh, maybe uh, the opinion, advice of uh, expert colleagues, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think with social media, we have to put a sort of uh, a balance between the advantages and the inconvenience. And these are my few personal tips to you. Well, first of all, when you go on social media, you're not alone. You have to be ready to manage the expectations of the other people who are following you, who are watching you, who are listening to you, who are monitoring maybe everything you're doing. You also need to be aware, and it doesn't mean you should not use social media, 
that excessive social media activities are not equivalent to true productivity or communication. I see a lot of colleagues, especially junior colleagues who are very enthusiastic, very motivated, who have an amazing and incredible uh, amount of social media activities, tackling all kinds of topics. Fine, they may be very popular and people may like what they are posting, but this is not necessary the true productivity or communication. So at the end of the day, I believe we need to learn first how to manage social media, we as healthcare professional, rather than letting social media managing uh, our daily life. So my advice, my personal humble advice, Please do not hesitate to completely disconnect from time to time. I may be wrong, but I feel when I discuss with many colleagues who went through uh, these uh, experiences, it looks like sometimes social media can lead to addiction. And if you disconnect suddenly, you will go through withdrawal. Remember, the things we learn in medicine, the withdrawal syndrome. And you may frequently think about what are you missing? Your fingers will feel useless because now we are always used, familiar, we're having something in hand. And if you don't have, your fingers will feel useless and your anxiety will increase. Maybe your stomach will be slightly upset and you're constantly searching for something to do. Well, actually, this will happen in the beginning, but please don't hesitate to completely disconnect. Nothing bad will happen, you know, while you're away. If you go on vacation for two weeks, just forget about social media. And when you come back, social media will still be there. And I don't think it will harm your career. So very important, whenever you feel uncomfortable, just disconnect, just disconnect, close the page. And actually you will notice very quickly, actually, it's easier I think to go through this withdrawal syndrome than other kind of addictions uh, we uh, learn and manage in medicine. It will become, within a few days, it will become easier to forget and let it go. You will feel more focused. You will have other refreshing feelings. And actually, I hope and remember, we had uh, in the beginning of the summer of uh, 2024, uh, a very nice round table discussion about the symptoms of burnout uh, within our community, uh, especially uh, the younger colleagues. And actually, I think that disconnecting from time to time to so, from social media, uh, having some other refreshing feelings, uh, being more focused can help avoiding some of these symptoms. When you are using social media, I think a major requirement, of course, this is true any time, but it's even very relevant to social media. You have to treat people with respect because a careless remark can be very hurtful. If you are face-to-face -face and you made a remark that the person in front of you didn't like, you can easily apologize and you sort out the problem maybe in a few minutes. It's more difficult when it comes to the cloud, to the digital world. And please don't forget, social media is not the place to dispense medical advice. Confidentiality is a major concern. You can discuss the content 
of an article which has been published uh, in a peer-reviewed reputable uh, journal, you can debate about the hazard ratio of this treatment versus another treatment, but you have to be informal to keep it professional and avoid replying to a patient, to a family of a patient uh, using social media, uh, well, this is a treatment you should receive or not. It's not the place to give any medical advice. Uh, spreading knowledge, disseminating education, uh, discussing scientific papers is something different. And please don't forget that some stakeholders and within your group are interacting with you, but you have a majority of people who are actually only watching, listening, and reading. And, well, once it's in the cloud, it is there forever. And very important to be aware that not all your followers are your friends. That's how it works in life. Not everybody you meet in the street when you walk is going to be your friend. And that is exactly the case in the cloud, in the virtual world. So you have to block spammers. You have to block those who use hateful language. You have to block and move away from people you don't feel comfortable interacting with. And you don't need to justify yourself or give explanations. Just move away quietly and politely. You're not supposed to share private issues. So at the end of the day, you have to establish your own rules and your limit for social media, and they have to stick to them. There's no single rule or set of rules or whatever, you know, guideline or consensus guideline, because we are uh, used in medicine when we don't know what to do to have a sort of a consensus recommendations, um, uh, expert advice, uh, key opinion leaders, and we grade the recommendations, etc. Well, we don't have uh, this kind of whatever consensus rules, etc. So you have to establish your own rules, your limits, and then stick to them. So the last part is, and by the way, uh, what I'm telling you here uh, will be published. Uh, it's already in press uh, in an editorial in the uh, Journal of the ICH, Clinical Hematology International, peer-reviewed open uh, access uh, academic uh, journal. So please don't forget, you can submit your papers. And the summary of this webinar about social media is going to be uh, published actually soon in Clinical Hematology uh, International. And in this article, you have a, a nice table, three columns, giving you some very clear guidance. Again, it's personal opinion. You don't see references there because they don't exist. So if you want to establish your professional presence on social media, and this is uh, a good thing, you have to create official accounts, use a professional photo, high quality, a professional profile, maybe avoiding the last nice photo from you uh, on the beach during a vacation. We are in a professional uh, setting. Uh, I do not recommend to go to all platforms. Choose a couple of platforms and stick to them. I personally, uh, I have chosen since more than 10 years, 
LinkedIn and X, Twitter. You have to define your brand. You have to identify your niche in order to have consistent uh, messaging. I don't think you can deal about everything uh, in social media when it comes to our field, to our profession. So you may wish to define your area of expertise, the audience you want to reach. I don't know, maybe you are an expert in uh, a rare disease like uh, uh, amyloidosis, and then this is going to be your focus. Uh, and you have to ensure that your posts reflect your professional values, your expertise in this disease, and the type of content you want to be uh, linked to, you want to share. The content, as far as we are concerned, uh, and what we're talking about, it's about actually sharing and disseminating knowledge. And this is crucial. And this is the founding principle of uh, the International Academy for Clinical Immunology, exactly what we're doing here. But each of us using social media can do his part of the job because it is resp our responsibility to disseminate the content of uh, research findings, health tips, uh, uh, papers, peer-reviewed papers being published and make them available to the majority, uh, sharing our insight because we have the expertise, provide some thoughtful, professional uh, comment. And most important, and we can see a peak of activity on social media during the biggest uh, congresses. Uh, uh, we'll have uh, in a couple of weeks, uh, uh, maybe three weeks, uh, the uh, ASH meeting, the American Society of Hematology 2024 annual meeting in the beautiful city of San Diego. It's a fantastic event. You have almost 30,000, more than 25,000 people attending in general, but you have much more and more people following uh, the uh, content, the educational content using social media, thanks to the efforts of the community. When it comes to patient interaction, I do insist, please respect privacy. Never disclose patient information or personal stories unless there is a specific reason and you have the consent, clear consent. But at the same time, be responsive. This is our responsibility towards our patients, their families. Engage with comments and messages in a timely manner and address concerns or questions professionally. And maybe you can ask people to have a sort of a private conversation by email. You have to monitor your online presence. Put set up alerts. Uh, put alerts. Check your accounts. Uh, you can review your social media profile. You can use Google Alerts to see how is name you're mentioned, uh, your practice. Uh, it's important uh, to be careful and monitor any kind of misinformation about your negative comments. And as I highlighted, uh, you should be always ready for crisis management. Uh, if something go wrong, you need to be prepared uh, for negative feedback. So you have to develop a strategy to handle the non-constructive criticism or the negative reviews. But again, all the time, very professionally, calmly, and consider addressing the legitimate concerns privately. Move away from social media to sort things, stay calm and professional. And actually being a measured person with measured responses can enhance your reputation. Well, the goal is about networking, collaboration. So please connect with peers, engage with professionals in your, in your field, 
can lead to collaborative opportunities. I made a lot of friends thanks to social media. Some projects uh, were generated uh, through our social uh, media interactions. Uh, so it's very important. Don't ignore the privacy settings of your accounts. You have to adjust them. Uh, and again, be cautious with personal connect. Separate the professional part from the personal part. And last but not least, you have to stay informed because things are moving very quickly these days, including in the way social media uh, work. So follow trends. If there are training in, there is a training in your university, your hospital, why not attending a workshop or a webinar on social media like what you're doing today? And I'm very impressed. Hundreds of people are following us uh, today. Thank you uh, for being loyal to the AICH. And be authentic because being authentic uh, can help to build the trust with your audience. And this is a key uh, issue. And again, because you have established your code of conduct, ensure that your code of conduct aligns with some clear guidelines and professional standards. So I will uh, stop here. Uh, I hope uh, I managed to share with you my uh, experience. And uh, now uh, I'm more than happy uh, to address uh, some questions or comments uh, uh, from the uh, audience. And we have already uh, uh, a question uh, about uh, which platform uh, should I use? Well, as I mentioned, I can't recommend this or this. I would usually recommend to avoid going into all platforms, maybe choosing one, maximum two. As I mentioned, I personally use X and LinkedIn uh, because it's not easy. You need to have time, you know, to follow all this. Uh, we have another question here. Um, How much time do you spend on social media? Well, actually, I must confess, I never calculated uh, this. There are sometimes for two, three, four days, I don't even look into my account. I don't connect. And sometimes I would watch it several times per day. There are no rules. Actually, uh, social media activities should not be viewed as mandatory activities. This is something very important, very, uh, it is optional. It is, you're doing it because you feel you can bring something into uh, the field. Otherwise, just disconnect. Uh, another question uh, from the audience about the withdrawal syndrome. Uh, and uh, actually, the colleague is mentioning, you're right. I have felt several times this would, yes, yeah, the withdrawal syndrome exists with social media, but it is not life threatening, guys. So you can go and spend some nice vacation and forget about social media. Nothing bad uh, will happen. Uh, one question, another question now here. How do you deal with negative or sarcastic comments on social media? Uh, well, I usually uh, always stay calm. If this is very annoying and I feel it's hurting, it is nasty, I simply block these people. I don't follow them. and. I move away from them and just forget about these people who are always negative or sarcastic. Or sometimes I just ignore. In very rare situations for negative comments, I will provide 
a constructive answer. I remember uh, a tweet where I uh, commented, uh, I posted the abstract of a paper about uh, a new drug. And immediately someone said, oh, but this is rubbish. We don't need this drug, something like this. I politely replied that maybe in your place you don't need it, but as far as we are concerned, some patient may need it. And this is why it's good to share this research. And the story stopped there and I, I didn't continue uh, the debate. And usually please avoid entering into an argument. Just move away, just move away. Don't start an argument and question, answer, that is a very bad uh, method. Another question, we see some people who mock other scientific work on social media or sometimes try to demean other work and efforts. Yes. These are the negative people I described to you. Uh, and uh, this is why if you're not comfortable with these people who, you know, there is a good saying, I don't know who said this, but I would always recommend that one should move away from all those people who find a problem for every solution you propose. Move away from these people, just forget about them. So stick uh, to your uh, code of conduct, be professional, stay calm and move away. I'll take a last comment from Dr. Uriel Suarez and Uriel is a very active uh, member of the ICH. And he is in charge of, uh, with a few other colleagues, uh, of the news of the week. So every week the ICH would uh, send you a sort of a newsletter with some five, six uh, scientific papers with a summary. And actually Uriel is uh, uh, leading this. Dr. Suarez uh, is an accomplished uh, physician hematologist uh, in Madrid. And mm, his comment is, uh, uh, about the number of followers. Well, I can tell you uh, the number of followers does not define how good you are. And it's not uh, about a quality. So the idea is that you have to focus on quality. And you may remember that some people, I don't know how it works, you can buy followers, fake followers. So you can end up having thousands of followers. But I would say that's not the goal. The goal is to work within your community to achieve your goals, to disseminate knowledge, uh, education. Uh, we uh, uh, And that's it. It doesn't matter to have thousands of followers actually, or millions, that's not uh, the goal. I'll take one last comment from Dr. Giampaolo Merlini. Giampaolo is our master to all of us. He, he is a guy who uh, transformed the natural history of the management of amyloidosis. So Giampaolo, I feel very humbled that you're following uh, this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, and the question of Giampaolo, well, he thank you, Mohammed, for this brilliant and most useful webinar. Considering the sensitivity of the content and the complexity of social media, don't you think that we should work with experts in the field to help controlling the system in another way? Should we have a social media expert in our centers? My short answer is yes. If we can have this, that would be great because having someone who is knowledgeable in the field, who knows the technicalities also, uh, I think it's very important to avoid uh, some uh, problems and uh, uh, disasters. Uh, 
So anyway, I'll, I have to stop here. Uh, we went uh, uh, beyond the dedicated time. I hope you have enjoyed it. As I mentioned, uh, all this content will be summarized uh, in a paper that will be published soon in Clinical Hematology uh, International, the official uh, peer-reviewed academic journal of uh, the ICH. So wherever you are, please stay safe and keep well and hope to see you very soon. Bye-bye.